What's up, guys? Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Max. So yeah, elephant in the room. I am back after, I guess you can call it, an extended vacation, if you will. Um, but I'm extremely hyped to be back here to reconnect with this awesome audience. If you don't know me, you're probably wondering, who is this dude and why does he talk like that? But I look forward to getting to know you guys as well. Come holler at me down below in the comment section. But in this video, I do a brief iOS 16.3 overview as I sort of dip my toes back in the water to get back into the swing of things, so to speak. Uh, included in this video is a look at the global rollout of advanced data protection and a look at these little hardware security keys and how they are implemented in iOS 16.3. I also have a much more in-depth walkthrough of these security keys in an upcoming video as well. There is tons more to come, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Okay, so first and foremost, some people may consider this the boring stuff, but to me, it's anything but boring. It's really important actually, and that is the bug fixes that iOS 16.3 brings to the table. You have fixes for several kernel vulnerabilities. You have fixes for maps, fixes for Safari, fixes for screen time and weather, and a couple of significant WebKit fixes. So if there's no other reason why you decide to update to iOS 16.3, this should definitely be it. All right, so let's jump into some of the more user facing features and changes, starting with emergency SOS. So Previously, when you would hold the side button along with one of the volume buttons, you could invoke the emergency SOS where it would call emergency services. The problem with the original implementation is that if these buttons were pressed by accident, maybe you put it in a case where the button alignment wasn't just right, it would call emergency services automatically. But now notice what happens. So you see the two little indicators there. You'll both hear and see feedback from the flash. So it won't actually call until call. you release the buttons this time. So that will prevent you from accidentally calling emergency services. Now, another change you'll notice is the call quietly switch. So this basically allows you to start an emergency call using those gestures that we see above, but without that visual feedback you get from the flash and without the audible feedback that you get. So you can see it counting down, but it's dead silent doesn't even tell you to release the call once you reach the end of the countdown. So you can just tap cancel to cancel. US customers have been enjoying advanced data protection since 16.2, but in 16.3, this opt-in feature, which adds end-to-end -end encryption to nine additional iCloud data types, goes global. Now, the standard data protection already provided end-to-end -end encryption for things like home data, health data, password, and keychain, Apple car transactions, maps, Safari, etc. But advanced data protection adds it for nine more data types like iCloud backups, which include device and messages backups, iCloud Drive, photos, notes, reminders, and more. So before you enable ADP, you're, you have to set up at least one account recovery option. And that includes either a recovery key or a recovery contact. I've added a recovery key, which is a 28 digit key, which can help you if you happen to lose access to your account. And Apple's very upfront about this, telling you you will be responsible for data recovery because they no longer have the keys with advanced data protection enabled for things like photos, notes, reminders. So if you lose access, you're going to lose access to your data. By the way, don't, don't copy and paste your recovery key, please. That's a very bad practice, but I was just doing this for this video. I have an advanced data protection deep dive video coming up and it will explain and answer all the little questions that you may have about this. So if you want to see that, hit that thumbs up button and let me know down below in the comments. But now I have ADP enabled. You can see if I want to turn it off, I just simply tap the turn off advanced data protection button like that. And it tells me that those data types will no longer be protected by end-to-end -end encryption and that Apple will now be able to help me again if I happen to lose access. All right, so now let's talk about hardware security key support in iOS 16.3. This is going to be the brief explainer. I have a deep dive on this subject in an upcoming video. So again, be sure to subscribe to make sure you see that because I go in depth with every question that you probably have about security keys, but I'm going to give you the abridged explainer here in this video. So security keys 
basically offer you the strongest protection because they replace the six digit codes that are sent to trusted devices when you log into a device with two-factor authentication enabled, basically. So security keys work as that second factor, replacing those six-digit verification codes and eliminating any sort of phishing scam from an advanced attacker that may be able to somehow get that six-digit code that is sent to your trusted devices. Because you have these physical keys now, that is now impossible. And here's one of the keys that I recommend. This is a YubiKey USB-C key. So that means it has two interfaces. You have USB, and you have NFC, which is great for the iPhone because the iPhone has NFC support. So we can add this key via NFC simply by placing the key on the back of your iPhone like that. So give your first key a name and then add the second key. Yes, Apple requires that you add at least two keys to enable security key support in 16.3. So this time I'm going to connect it using a lightning to USB cable. And this other UB key uses USB-A and I simply tap right here to add that key. So Apple requires two keys just in case you lose the first one, you still can access your account with the second one. So once you add the keys, you're gonna to need to review your active devices because all these devices right here are logged in devices with iCloud and they will not be logged out when you add these keys. So even if they're running an older version of iOS, they will stay logged in even though you have the keys added. So you just wanna review that list to make sure there's nothing there that shouldn't be there. All right, so the keys are added, and now I'm going to show you how to use security keys to log into a new installation of iOS 16.3. So you're going to get a courtesy notification to your trusted devices, and it'll tell you, hey, you try to log in. Was that you or was it not? And if it wasn't, you can take the appropriate action, but I'll just tap OK. And now I'm going to use my security key. So I'm just going to grab one of the keys. It doesn't matter which one. So I'll take this one here and just place it behind my phone to connect via NFC, just like that. And now I'm authenticated. It's that easy, but not everyone really should be using security keys. In my opinion, stay tuned. I'll have much more on this in an upcoming video. So ladies and gentlemen, that is an overview of some of the more interesting iOS 16.3 features. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with nine to five Mac.